Okay, you can hear us. Please write in the chat where you're from. Is there any country where the sunshine comes and we want to find out who is the farthest away from here? Is someone from Australia? Is someone from Caribbean? Where are you from? America, 60 degree, nice. UK, Portugal, yeah, that's nice. Grenoble, ah, oh, we see some customer. Hungary, 10 degrees. Canada, so we are all from all over the globe. Italy, 15 degrees. Okay, I see still our, uh, people are coming into the, the webinar, so we'll wait a few seconds um, until everyone is inside. We have prepared a lot of things for you. And first of all, we welcome Birgit Becker. She is also in the webinar and we check if she is online. Hello, Birgit, are you online? Hi, Stefan. Yes, I'm online. I'm happy that we have our first English webinar regarding eGroupware Preview 16.1. So the new version upcoming this year. Okay. Hello, Elias. Nice to meet you. So that's nice that you all are here and we welcome you all here from Germany. We are close to Frankfurt and a warm welcome to all over the globe. And what we want to talk about today, our topic is Ecoware Preview 16.1. So that means we want to show you what will come up in Ecoware, what are the new features, what have we done, what we have developed. And I think half an hour we want to show you the features. We want to show you a lot of things and also we need some feedback from you. And we want to show you here on a live demonstration on our notebook, on our mobile devices, what is really new and what is not. So if there are any technical things could be happen because everything is live, what you see now. Um, so please, um, if everything went wrong, please, everything will work and be patient. And we now start, I think, with giving over to Birgit. Yeah, so I like to first give you a quick overview what are the major points what changed for 16.1 and what we are showing today so one big step what we did is about the design enhancement so i think we have a much lighter design much more nicely arranged lists and i'll show you that in the next step and we want to have a look on our new calendar which is completely new um, done. And the third step, which is um, one of the things what will come up with 16.1, but we are not going to show today, is about active sync or e-sync, how it is called in eGroupware. There we updated to the newest version and one other thing is, and that's one of the really nice things, it's how to use eGroupware on your mobile device. And so we are going to share now our top, so that, so that you see live what has changed. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. And we're happy to answer questions as much as pop possible in our timing we have planned for the webinar. Okay, so that's the new look and feel. You see, we have a much lighter design. The big gray lines, what we had before, have been removed. Um, the headers of the lists are all arranged in one line, showing here the description where you are in, in that light gray thing, so it's not disturbing. For all adding new cards or adding new entries, it's a plus on the first page. Then we have on the second place the search on all applications and then come all the other filters. So we have it similar in InfoLog, you have the plus on the left hand side, you have the search, you have all the details also in mail. We have 
one line, the composer's on the first page, then the third, then the other things are coming. So that goes through all applications, similar also for admin or calendar also changed. We will look more in detail later on for the calendar, but in general, you see also there is one header line which includes the main things that you need to navigate or orientate between the different views. So it's no longer arranged in the side menu where it was before. It's now in toolbar on top of the list. So if you like, you could also click the side menu away. For whatever reason, it seems to not yet work, but that's something what we have to fix. So you, in general, the idea is you click on the triangle, the side menu goes away. And so if you have a small screen, it still fits on your screen. That's more or less that design what we changed for our list things. Similar also in file manager to give you an example, there we also have the upload is on the left hand side, then the search comes, then we have the parse and the icons which comes on the right hand side. So um, it's a much lighter and more clear design. Hope you like it. Maybe you could give us a quick or short feedback in that regard. What do you think about the new look and feel of a group here. Okay, we see nice design. Elias writes clean. Okay, Francesco is writing very clean and interface, sweet colors. Yes, that's nice. Uh, because developers have worked a lot of time for getting everything ready, what you see now. And just if you look in the calendar, and I would say we should say thank you to all uh, who worked with the, with this release and i think we are in a really good way and it's it was much much work to get everything ready as you can see it now yeah so if there are not any questions which are more detailed going into the design i would say we go on and have a detailed look into our new calendar Yes, clean design. Yeah, that's what we want to have. And this was the, the goal for this release, to make it clean, make some glitches away that it's really better to find. Um, so we are on the way to making a better group. That means a beta designer group. And we want to get feedback from the beta group. And then after the beta group, the next steps are coming with release candidates. But before, this is just um, the beta group is testing for six or eight weeks. And if after this is done, and then we go out with the release candidates, and then we can go to a new version. So this will take also some time. Maybe it's it's faster, we will see. But the first is just give you an impression what the new version is. That is the first step. If you want to test, you're welcome. Please, I give you now later an email address where you can send and then we can um, we can work together in this beta testing group. Yeah, also like to, um, if someone is there who needs specific translations, because there are much new features. So if you are, your main language is French or Italian, you may also help translating. So as soon as the version comes out, every text your users are needing are no longer in English. They are also available in your language or your preferred language that could also be an option for the testing group that working on the translations helping getting some better in the different languages all our users may use so feel free to send us that email okay let's have a deeper look into the calendar what has changed so i said already we have a toolbar and on the toolbar we have our different views so that would be the day view, that would be the week view. Here we go for our <coughs> multi-week view and you can put in your preferences how much weeks should be displayed in the week view. And in depending on what you set there, you will see two weeks or three weeks or, or four weeks. 
and for sure we still have also other views available and we use the toolbar so that's a toolbar which is similar already introduced in email so if you have an action missing here have a look on the right hand side where the more is and in the more we have the different views available so we have here also the months view the months view is in a different design so it got some compact list showing all appointments without the time grid and you can also set a preference if you have many appointments um, which is showing for a group view you can also switch that on for the week view it's by default enabled always for months view but you can enable it also for other views or if you like our planner view either the planner by user or the planner by category for sure a planner by user doesn't make so much sense if i'm just on one user and as before i can click on the week or I can click on the day to see more. So the user selection has also changed in 16.1. So on the left hand side, that old style is gone. And as soon as I'm clicking inside, I can type something in and get the list of users which fit or take them just by clicking inside it opens automatically for the user accounts and i can select another user or i can select my resource so for example a beamer including the okay maybe i didn't select it <laughs> or we are running into a problem it's still a test version so it could be that sometimes things happen and that's one of the things what we need for the beta tester that exactly if you run into a situation get that also feedback to us so that we can before the release come find all these small things which are maybe still in the nice thing for the planner in 16.1 is before you have only been able to click at and it adds an appointment for everybody now I can simply click in to add an appointment where my resource is already included or to add an appointment for that user and it gets automatically created depending on the permissions what you have set it's either the appointment of that user or you invite the user as before on 16 or 14.3 so that has changed and it's much more similar in a way to be used like our list view. So you also have the context menu on all appointments as well in the planner view as also in our regular view. So going back to the week view, I can, for example, click on that appointment and change my status just by context menu on that appointment. So it's maybe much user friendlier to accept or deny an appointment in the new calendar. And for sure, that was one of the questions we had from the previous webinar, which was done in Germany. For sure, you can still track and drop meetings around. So if I'm taking that appointment, I can just put it somewhere. It either opens or if I'm taking it and let it fall somewhere here it is changing i can also change recurring events by track and drop and it will ask what you want to do so there are much new things which are available in the new calendar if and there will for sure come also more enhancements later on so that you maybe track an appointment from one user to another and just get him invited such things are on our list of things what we want to get for a new calendar and one of the things why we have that new calendar being developed. Just can you say something about the colors? I think there's a big change in how the colors are presented in the calendar than in the 14.1. Yeah, so we did two huge changes. One is we no longer have the colors on the top line where it was in 14.3, we have it in a small 
line on the left hand side which goes through all applications so that the new style of categories are displayed. And another change what we did for our new calendar is um, the default color. We changed it from gray to blue. So that appointment, looking into that appointment, it is a recurrent event. It has something set, okay, that's out of office color. Um, but that test event, what I created here, for example, you see there is now category selected. Whether well, the category selection has changed, so I can just click inside, get my list of categories and can select whatever I like. We, we will change the design of the calendar also a bit more so that it categories or location, which are one of the prominent things, but most applications um, have directly right away, um, put it out of the details and get it more into the header so that we can easily reach it. So these are things what we have planned to change, but not done yet. So these are things what we are working on. There was, there was a question, uh, maybe we can check with the question. There was a question about um, what happens to user selection? What about groups in user selection? I think maybe if you open an appointment or so you can show a bit here, it's here the same than if you have an event. There is the same selection box you see. Maybe you can see it more if you click here to a new appointment and you can see it. If you go to participants, you can say here, you can type in user accounts. Can you also type in groups? You see what you have before, that you have selected groups and then you have to go to this, this symbol, the search symbol, that's not anymore here. So you, you have a better selection of users, I think is a great enhancement for the new eCopra version. Yeah, so what we see at the moment is, um, this changed a bit in the last day, so sorry for that thing. Um, the group selection should be possible here. It doesn't work at the moment. It's maybe just enabled for users, but that's a point we for sure still allow um, selecting groups, even if it's not enabled at the moment. But what's different that is what we changed is there is one place where you could select users, contacts, and as well resources, or you can insert an email address. So we no longer have different fields for such things. We just have it in one place. So if I'm so searching again for my resource Beamer, you see it will be directly available and I can add it and I can similar add just one email address like office at .de which is just an email address and just add it in that way and it gets added. So we have also here a more clear way how it is structured. And that's the way we want to go with a new version in general. There was also a question I think from, from Eric. What happens with the entry if I decline it? Also decline oh. it, what, what could happen on this way? It's similar to what we had before. So if I, decline an event, so change my status and reject it. It is like before, no longer visible in the calendar. Uh, um, but for sure it's still shown because I have now the calendar of different users being visible. So if I remove the other users, it wouldn't longer be shown which are in there. Um, so it's no longer in the calendar of the user which is logged in, but I can still use a filter, say, show my rejected events and go to the event, do something with it, or use again the context menu and change my status to more response or tentative or whatever. And then um, it's, so in that regard, it hasn't changed um, to what we had in 14.3. Okay, there was a question also what happens without the email account. Sure, you can also add the email address and then it's also 
invited. Um, the next question was about what happens with a database about 50,000 accounts. You know, are you talking about e-copper users or just about accounts, contacts? So if you talk contacts, are you inviting 50,000 directly to, to one? I think it's more the question how to find it. So in that regard, it hasn't changed. What I can do is if I'm writing in my thing here, I can write something like Santir and Sonia. And so I think that's maybe something what we could also still work on because I'm not sure um, if we can, I think we need to have more options how to specify the search better. Um, that's something what we will work on for the new version because we also have a huge amount of contacts and for sure, so searching within the contacts is an, an thing which needs to be taken into account that the search brings you an amount of addresses which are reasonable, um, selectable. And Ralph said, it's look, look up works. And I would say we should, you should try it with the new version, give us a try or go to the beta group and test it in the hosting. I would say we have a bit running out of time. So we want to show you as well what we have done on the mobile template. And I would say, let's go over to our mobile theme. What we have prepared for this um, is what you see now. We have a Samsung Galaxy here. And with TeamViewer, you can now see the, the Galaxy connected. So that means we can also use our fingers, but then you're not seeing what we are typing. So we are using at the moment the mouse pointer that you can see what we are doing. And what you see now is just I would say something like an app, but it is not an app. That means you can just go via URL directly and you see this kind of presentation. So you don't have to install anything. You just only open your Ecobar URL and then you get a better view. And Birgit is showing how this works. So the first time you go to it, you type in the URL, the username and the password. We took the, check the language and we say, log in and then you see how this works and you see first of all a list of all applications and to start in the address book for example and here we go and they can show you a bit what you can do and how this works and everything yeah so what we done for mobile devices is having a more similar look and feel to a native application. So it means you see username and organization name, and you may see also um, if there is some photo uploaded, then you would see the photo. And if you want to look more in detail into what is relevant data for that contact, you just click on the contact and it opens in a preview mode. So, and that's pretty quick. So, um, we already had that question. Does this browser availability for the mobile phone is something which is contradictory to the Zoom? No, it's not. I would say it's an enhancement. There are good reasons why using still Zoom, maybe having a smaller account of contacts being synced on my device so that I can phone them easily even if there is no internet connection, but still having the possibility to search and check contacts out of my whole eCooper address book or there are applications which are maybe not available via Zoom and getting there the chance to have the information available on our mobile device. If I now want to edit and add some information into, I just click on edit and that will take a bit longer time because there is more information and more details into 
So it needs a bit more time to get it rendered. As soon as it is avail available, I can just type in every information I like and I also can open all tabs which are on the mobile browser vertically arranged. So these are the organization information. I want to get it closed. Just close it and open the private tab. And I see the information which are related to my private information of the contact or seeing some detailed information where the category is in and maybe selecting a category which is related to that customer that in the, the label client. Um, or similar, seeing links, maybe if there is an attachment, it would show up on links or can, can also upload something here. So similar what I can do in my browser. That's the way what we said where we want to go in the mobile devices. So you have full availability of all data which, which, is, which is in Ecoupware, but for sure, you need to decide where information which makes sense to soon and where, which information makes more sense to have it available on the browser. And if you want to choose a favorite, you can just click on that star symbol, which is related for favorites. And just clicking on that favorite, it will open my according selection which I created and used in my browser so we are also similar or I can select something here by just going around from left to right or from right to left it selects and deselects and if I have selected something my context menu is available also on my mobile device and so I can use things we read used the amount of actions which are available on the mobile device. Um, and also happy to get your feedback in that regard. What are actions which are maybe more important or actions which could be still removed just because it's not needed. So these are things where we are happy to work with our beta testers in that regard to get a really nice um, design and availability of things that are needed for you to work with. Can I read my email as well? Is also yeah. working with this mobile template? Yeah, sure. So if you want to get your site menu where the different applications show up, click on the left icon and it shows up here as different icons. So clicking on the mobile, on the mail application, will open the mail application and you see all our applications have different colors. Um, the icons which are shown on the main screen, if I reopen that one, they should be colored also, but for whatever reason, after reloading my device, um, the colors are gone, so that's something what we have to work on, but you see it anyway in the application, so you will be you get used very quick to it. So mail is that light blue, and if I'm clicking on an email, I get the mail preview also very quickly. So that's our design, having a quick preview. And if I want to reply to it, it will take a longer time because again, we have the situation that for editing something, there is more information needed. There is maybe the text editor loaded and so it takes more time, but I can use it and I can just click into and type whatever I like. Was it a tab lock? But it's yeah, a there is a tab lock enabled. Um, yeah. So that's the way it works. If I want to send it, I just click on the second icon, which does the sending, or I can click on the attachments, and the attachments will call my local dialog of the mobile phone, and so I can attach here something um, just from my mobile phone. So these are things what we 
goes with our new design and the new way the things are working. So I'm not going to send it because it's just a test, test account. And here also you see that coloring thing. So different labels, what you can set, make different colors. Or if something is flagged, it gets a different color. So I think you will get pretty soon um, used to how that works. So here, for example, just to show it, um, I have some an attachment. So I click on the attachment and it calls. Oh, OK, it says it's not available on my mobile device. So if you don't have an application available, which is enabled to show um, PDFs, you run into a problem, then you have to enable it. But here, for example, they are photos, so images, so they just show up. And I can click on some. And similar would happen for the PDF, but there's something on my device which wasn't working in that regard. Do we have any questions, Stefan, from our? Uh, a few, but first, can we check? So I would summarize a bit what we have in the mobile app. That means we have the email module, we have the calendar, we have the info log, we have that also. That's fine. We also have the, that's the info log module, which opens now. But we also have the other applications available. So let's say the main applications. So you could have also tracker, you could have resources on it, you could have admin on it, you could have project manager on it. Um, so the main applications are already available and you can configure in a group or in the administration which applications should be shown on a mobile device. We can't enable wiki or knowledge base in that same style just because the applications are not designed for it. But if you decide and say, I like to have it still and just fiddle around with the way it shows up, then something what you as an admin can decide if it should show up or not. Okay, we have some questions and we check some questions that come feedback, very nice design, design more usable for mobile devices from Elias. Thanks for this, looks very usable um, from Walter, that's fine. That was a question from Peter. I think Ralph said something about the site manager and I think site manager is not the main focus at the moment. Uh, we are focused on the main eco application like calendar, file manager, address book, yeah, I don't think the tracker, that's uh, the main thing, yeah. info log, sure. And this is what we want to to focus at the moment on, on this kind of applications. Yeah, we will not enable the site manager to be used on the mobile phone in that regard to edit there something nicely. I think that's something what you can do easily on the browser. It's not that the site manager is no longer available. It's just not on that demo instance um, being used. There comes another question. Is there something possibility for the list you to see if you can, can I configure what should be shown there? No. Um, so we said it doesn't make so much sense to have it um, available to select columns or such things, because that simply doesn't work on a mobile device, because all mobile devices are so different. You could have it in portrait or landscape mode. You could have it on a tablet or on a mobile device. So we had one design. What you can do for sure is all these things are based on our e-template. So for sure, what you can do is modify whatever we provided and add or remove things what we have there for your instance. That's something what is possible, especially on EPL. It's easy to mount e-templates and therefore modify it in a way you like to have it. There was another question for the update. Yes, sure, update is possible. Also from, from 11.1 to 16.1, from 40.1 to 60.1, from 1.8 to 11.1. So all things are are possible, sure, and Tracker is available as well. So, Hi, Francisco. Um, 
they are saying hello to you. Uh, so you're well known here in the team. Welcome. Um, also for all devices, the mobile team, we have to hello <laughs> a bit. Take care about the browsers on your mobile device because we would recommend that you use the Google Chrome on your devices um, and all the newest versions. That should be really, it's really important because we have seen some problems with older versions. So the best thing is new, new browse on the mobile uh, system and then you're in a good way. Yeah, and um, to be honest, I would say the best experience what we had so far is with Androids, which are, let's say, um, working or coping better um, with the way our things are working. There are many things on Safari, on iPhone, with some gestures with which have some problems. We are still working on these things and we are happy to get you in the better tester group and testing with your device, getting your feedback, what, what works, what makes problems. But as Stefan said, we strongly recommend using Chrome um, for testing because I don't think that it makes any sense for um, different browsers which are available on a mobile device um, to have that fixed. That's something what we can't um, make sure. So if you are on a device, download your Chrome, test it with Chrome. If you are on an iPhone, for sure you are fine to test also with Safari and give, a, give us feedback in that regard. But there could be things which are working with Chrome, but not with Safari. Or there could be things which are working on an iPad, but not on an iPhone. So um, these are things what we have to um, take care about, but ma ma some things um, we are not sure at the moment if they are solvable. So for today we had, for example, we found out that there are problems with the HTML editing on iPhones. iPad works, but not iPhones. So maybe there will be some things which have to be disabled in that cases. Yes, there was a question. We recommend browsers if it's Firefox. I think Firefox and Chrome are both very, very nice browsers. So that's if you're talking um, about the laptop, sure, Firefox on and Chrome. If you're talking of mobile devices, um, I can't recommend Firefox at that moment uh, just because we didn't test it, or at least from my testings in the years before, Firefox on mobile devices was much slower than what Chrome was able and which is the default browser on all Android um, devices. But for laptops, both are still fine. Okay, so I would think we are just nearly out of our time. I would say, please, if you have any questions, write it into the chat. We also invite you to our beta testing group that means if you if you want to help us to make the version better, because we want we are now starting the better um, testing system. That means you get in our hosting a test instance where you can test it. We have a tracking track view made for you that you can come in and you can discuss with us and give us some some feedbacks about the version. And we want to have a version that is very stable before we give it give it out to our customers to our clients. So please give us feedback, join the beta testing group, discuss with us new feature, discuss with us everything you want to do, and you are welcome to do. We need translators to translate the software. We need people um, who give us feedback. We need people to write documentation, so everything. We need people to come to join, and you're all welcome. And we would like to just give us a feedback now, what you see about design, what do you think about the usability of this thing and mobile devices? And I think, you know, it's just a presentation at the moment, but for you to get really experience, it's necessary to try it on your own. And this is the idea with the better testing system that you can try it. You can get if it's working for your business or not. And this is what I invite you. Come, please do this. I write you an email address here. It's info at the highlight 
dot de. I think it has a typo, stylite dot de. Please write an email if you want to take part in this group, in the testing group, and just write there a few words about how you are using it, what you want to help to make EcoBear better, and give us feedback, and then we will check this and taking part of the group, and we give us a trial for the new version. Then you have the 16.1 preview version, and this is just the idea. And welcome and join. Yeah, and we also plan to have webinars within the beta tester group. So um, we may need to take care if we have one in English, one in German, but that will depend also a bit on the amount of people in the beta testing group. And let's see how either our German testers are with English. So we may have one webinar in English and one in German or one in English. Let's see how that goes. Um, and we are happy to have further steps being shown in webinars to all our customers. So this is our first English webinar. The we'll question a bit, what do you think? Do you like this kind of webinars short for 30 minutes, 45 minutes? Is there anything what you also would like to learn more about EcoWare that we make more sessions where you can take part in? Because we have a lot of things to show because something what maybe you don't know, new modules are coming from a partner from us. They are doing some invoicing modules, some offer modules. There will come a workflow module. So a lot of new things are coming and where we also need testers feedback. And this is just where we need something. Do you want to like to have this? Yeah, with the apps, that's what I'm talking about. The invoice model, yeah, at the moment there's no invoicing. It's just starting as a module for writing offers, but first starting writing offers and the module is still in development. So that means that there are also invoicing is coming soon, but I would say, please, it's just first start with the, with the, uh, with making quotations and then the other things are coming, I would say, until it's really ready. I would say it will take around one year to get it everything ready with that new invoicing module. First of all, the workflow model is nearly ready. Our first customer are using it. And if you want to test this as well, you're also welcome to join, but the modules are not for free. So you have to pay some money for these modules, and, but you're welcome to test in the hosting. And, to, and we will make a special webinar the new modules that you also see this because it's it's so big and we don't have time for this at the moment but we will show you everything what you want to see is there something also what you say um, you want to learn more about ecoware can you tell us a bit what you really like on ecoware what what you think ecoware is unique for something Yeah, maybe to give, to give you an example, we had in Germany some webinars already like um, showing how import and export works with EcoBear. We had a webinar which goes by um, serial letters and also emails, um, which use placeholders and such things. Um, and some seminars which goes best practice things or answering questions regarding whatever you, you you think or you are interested in. Um, so if there is anything which makes sense for a wider range of people, we are happy to also provide these kind of webinars in English. Okay. I would say thank you for all your feedback. And we wish you all a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world. System integration, yes. EPL, the best way for each system integration. Yeah, I think this is also a good thing. And this is possible, I think, with the workflow system. And I would say, 
Have a nice day, Birgit. What do you think? Yeah, also thank you. Nice to see so many known um, people I've been in touch either in the ticket system or on the community somehow. So um, I'm happy to stay in touch with everybody and uh, especially in the tester group, we will talk then more in detail about all things which are related to 16.1. And thank you for taking part at that webinar. Okay, thank you a lot. And I hope I will see all of you in or most of that in the test. And I would say thank you for all. Thank you for your time and have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye.